You couldn't tell from how we act in traffic, but Sri Lankans are actually great in a crisis. During the recent floods, we basically saved our own asses with a lot of help from the military and not much help from the government. So some politicians like Suju Asenasinghe put their face on relief goods, which is about as useful as a dog pissing on them. No offense. So how does the government actually prepare for disasters, since we kind of couldn't tell? So after the tsunami, we were like, this sucks, and we set up a Ministry of Disaster Management. Now this ministry has a minister and a deputy minister. Here's their faces on bags of rice. If you can guess what their names are, I will give you some rice. So to manage these guys, we need a national council that has 37 people on it. The president, the prime minister, 22 ministers, every chief minister, and five members of the opposition. It's basically a tour bus full of ministers that will come to your disaster and put their face on it. Now what these guys manage is four organizations that do the actual work. So it's the Department of Meteorology, the Disaster Management Center, and the National Disaster Relief Services Center, or NDERSC, and the National Building Research Organization. Now I've been doing some reading and I can't really tell the Disaster Management Center and the Disaster Relief Center apart. Together they both seem to have a budget of about 1.5 billion rupees. However, neither one can maintain a working Facebook page, the emergency hotline number doesn't work, and both of their websites are pretty crap. Now so what? Who cares about a website? Who cares if they understand mobile phones? A lot of their job is rebuilding houses and stuff. Well, the difference between a hazard and an actual disaster is very often information. And having our government have the communication skills of like a teenager might help. We know that it rains every May. Here's a chart. We also know the floods are our number one problem, even bigger than the tsunami. Here's another chart. I forgot the third chart. Wait. Oh yeah. We also know where floods will happen. Here's a map. So the government has all this information. It just isn't able to communicate it. I'm criticizing them, but the government is essential for handling relief. This is their job. They know where the relief centers are. They know what relief is needed. They just can't send a tweet to send their lives. The tsunami was one wake-up call, but this should be another wake-up call. It's 2016 and we just can't do this anymore. We don't need a whole ministry. We just need a few minions that can use the internet. Just the average amount of information a teenager shares on a Thursday could have saved millions of dollars, or even lives. Just look at what the private sector did with little to no information at all. Pick Me, a taxi company, deployed boats and planes and went and picked up relief from your house. Read Me, which is just a tech blog, maintained a really good list of disaster relief centers and what they needed. And Dialog, which is a phone company, collected over 45 million rupees in donations from what I guess is about 300,000 people. This is not what these people even do. They have day jobs, but in a matter of days, they did amazing work, as did a lot of private citizens. But still, we need help from the government, especially information. So to the Ministry of Disaster Management, please don't be like this rusty-ass phone, which actually doesn't work. Get on social media, get on the internet. Tell us if a disaster is going to happen, and if it happens, tell us how we can help. If you give Sri Lankans a little bit of information, you'll be surprised how awesome we can be.